Greetings and praise the Lord. We are in a heavy political season. I invite us to read Jeremiah 29, verse 1 to 10. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jehoachin and the queen mother, the court officials and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the skilled workers and the artisans had gone into exile from Jerusalem. He entrusted the letter to Elasa, son of Shaphan, and to Gemaria, son of Hilikiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. It said, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I have carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed from Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. Amen. Allow us to reflect on the theme, living up to our Christian duty. We are in a heavy political season. The competition is very intense. The 9th of August is double-edged. It will break dreams, but also make other dreams come true. The outcome will affect all of us in one way or other. The question is, is there anything we can do to influence the outcome? The answer is yes. We not only can do something, we have a Christian duty to contribute. In the passage, let us be reminded that God has a stand on national and government matters. Nations matter to God, and so does Kenya. Let us also be reminded that sometimes we want to be told what we want to hear. All contestants are saying, we will win by 9 a.m. Others are saying, we shall send them home by 8 a.m. And that is what they want to hear from the people they meet. But is that what God wants to say? God knows the state of the people. He knows that the children of Israel are in exile. He knows their struggles and pain. He knows the situations they are going, uh, they are going through and experiencing. God knows our conditions and circumstances. He knows the price of fuel. He knows the price of unga. He knows the price of carrots. He also knows the value of the Kenya shilling. God's grace is still abundant. Not everything is exiled. Abundance still follows the children of Israel in exile. God tells them, increase and do not decrease. The God of increase is still with us. Even in hard times, 
God does not close us out completely. He is merciful. He leaves some graces open. God is not limited by yellows and blues. God can work through any regime. The kingdom of God is not limited to the kings of this world. God can use even earthly kings to do his will. When you focus on the kingdom of God, you have a vision that is above the normal expectations. Brothers and sisters, God is calling us to do three things. One, he is calling us to pray. In verse 7 of the portion of scripture we have read, it says, Also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Like the children of Israel, we are called to pray. We pray because God alone knows and controls the future. The children of Israel must have been praying to the extent that the false prophets took advantage of the situation and began to give them false hope. But God speaking to them, he calls them to pray. I know we are praying and we are also expecting serious outcomes. But does your prayer reflect the intensity of the situation of our nation? I know of people who have been fasting and praying, wailing for this nation. Extraordinary times call for extraordinary responses. Intense times require intense responses. If you really want to see change, let your passion for change reflect your pattern and passion for prayer. It is good to pray for the country as you are praying for food, but that is not good enough. Cash your prayers will not deliver significant results. Secondly, God is calling us to proper conversations. Conversations matter to God. When you go to the book of Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, you see Miriam and Aaron discussing Moses, and God was not happy. From the book of Marakai chapter 3 and verse 16, we see people who feared God in a conversation, and God was pleased with them. Jesus also joins a conversation of two disciples on their way to Emmaus, as recorded in Luke chapter 24, verse 13 to 17. As Christians, how is our conversation different? Verse 8 and 9 of the portion of scripture we have read says, do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This passage shows us the need to have conversations that are influenced by the wisdom and liberation of God. When I listen to conversations, they either end at the blue corner or at the yellow corner. Hardly do I hear conversations that end at the kingdom corner. Why? Because we speak out of imagination and not liberation. Our conversations are qualifying the people we have elected in our minds. Is it that God does not have something to offer us? No, it's because we are too clever. We are master political analysts. We do not take time to hear what God has to say. As children of God, let us be reminded that we are God's mouth. 
We should not speak so much for the earth and leave no saliva for the kingdom. As children of God, let us be reminded that we are God's mouth. We should not speak so much for the earth and leave no saliva for the kingdom. We have governments, but the kingdom of God reigns forever. Thirdly, we are being called to participate in voting. God uses voting and election to effect kings and leaders. A good example is Exodus chapter 18 verse 21 and Acts chapter 6 and verse 3. When Jeremiah heard of the false prophecies, he wrote a letter. Chapter 1 of Jeremiah 29 talks about that. Jeremiah took an action to correct the situation and is also calling everyone to take action. Jeremiah writes the letter, but he does not deliver it in person. He uses Elasa and Gemaria to deliver it. To execute our Christian duty, we also need others along the way. We need to participate in voting all of us, because if some of us participate and others do not participate, then the outcome may not be what we desire. It is our Christian duty to choose leaders. And there are people who are still debating whether they will vote or not. As dwellers on earth, God uses earthly systems for our good. If we desire good times here on earth, we cannot ignore the systems that run the earth. We shape the systems by the authority of God so that they can work for our good. On August 9, are you voting in your color or are you voting an agent of the kingdom of God? On 9th August, are you voting in your color or are you voting an agent of the kingdom of God. A vote is not a mere paper. It is a voice, and not just a voice, but a voice to make the kingdom come and God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Whoever wins is not the Messiah. We are not going to any canon. Neither are we moving from any bottom to any up. Let us trust in God who makes everything beautiful in his time. He fixes us as a nation. He fixes us as individuals and as families. Brothers and sisters, therefore, let us remember prayer, proper conversations, and participate in voting. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our loving Father, we thank you for speaking to us in such a powerful manner. Thank you for reminding us that we have a Christian duty to pray. And here we commit ourselves to you. Hear us when we pray. We also ask that you may help us to engage in proper conversations and participate in voting. For this is our prayer of faith in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.